Okay. Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Welcome to the latest edition of AFCA Roundtables, featuring the creative and the cast of the wonderful Apple series, Swagger. We're gonna uh, kick things off by introducing you to the AFCA members who are taking place on the call today, beginning with Rhonda Rasha Penrice in Atlanta, Janita Davis in Indiana, Karan Lenore in Charlottesville, Virginia, Nancy Green in Los Angeles, Jill Monroe Stiletto in Los Angeles, Chris Stiles in Cleveland, Ohio, Tamika in Atlanta, Ruben Recalled in Miami, Florida, and our facilitator, Katia Woods in Philadelphia, and Dana Abercrombie in New York. I'm gonna let you guys all do what you do so well, and I will see you on the other side. Amazing, thank you. Great to talk to you all today. Reggie, I wanna start with you. I really appreciated that you put the women's side of the AAU story in this. And I wanna know what made you decide to include that in this story? There's a wealth of things that you can discuss as far as the young man and what goes in them, but what made you wanna make sure to ground it and include what happens with the girls? Because it's slightly different, even though it's the same. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. That was something we spent a lot of focus on. Um, I mean, I think first and foremost, there's just a lot of strong women in my life. So it, it felt organic to do that. Um, I made a concerted effort to have some strong female voices in my writer's room. You know, I always like to say, like, the, the, the reason to do something like that is not to be politically correct, but it just makes the product better. And um, also, you know, I just think the the artists, the female artists, you know, on our show, I mean, the male and female are, are, are all great. And but the, the women just really held it down. And I mean, I would say, interesting enough, I don't know why, but one of the easiest characters for me to write was Jenna. Like it just like I just love writing Jenna's character. Um, but you know, there's just a, you know the the show is not just about basketball. It's what happens on and off the court, and just including the female characters allowed us to just have like a bigger canvas to play with. Thank you. Um, Nancy, go ahead, please. Hi, uh, Mr. By the Wood. Um, so I'm really interested in this show. Um, one of the reasons is I know that you've done sports movies before. Um, one of your earlier movies um, or sports shows movies, and that was Biker Boys. And I wanted to know how that compares, like coming to this now, uh, different locations, it was a different type. And I wanted to know how you feel you've changed and times have changed since then. Um, I mean, I think one of the things that's changed, which is really exciting, you know, to have this show you know, premiering October 29th on Apple TV Plus is like years ago, decades ago, when we did a narrative that was, you know, black characters were central, we just thought like, wow, we're going to have domestic and, you know, will we get international? And it was always like this saying that black narratives don't sell overseas. And so first and foremost, the fact that like we're going to be in about a hundred countries. That's just mind boggling right there. And and that's something that clearly, you know, was not on the table, you know, you know, two decades ago. Um, but I also just think, you know, it's interesting because I never really thought of Biker Boys as a sports film and, and, and you, you're, you're right. I guess it is, but, um, really the focus on swagger was so much about what happens to the characters, you know, um, who our characters are, what are the character arcs, and really how they um, shape each other's lives. And so um, I, I think that, you know, there's a there's a shooting style that I used in Biker Boys, and it was something I used very minimally in that film. And it was really exciting. It was one of our secret weapons that we haven't really talked about. You know, we're not exposing our secrets yet, but I was able to, like, use some of the way I shot the motorcycle stuff with our basketball games. And it was just really, really, you know, exciting and fun to do. 
Nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to say too that it was interesting to me because um, I was an extra on Biker Boys. So oh, wow. seeing Swagger now and this, it's kind of, you know, a very, very interesting process to me. Mm, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm going to interrupt for a quick second. Everyone, I know you can't see, but we have the, literally the entire cast. So we have O'Shea, we have Isaiah, we've got Kavejane, we've got everybody. So just be conscious of that because you can't see you can't see who, who you're talking to or who's available to ask a question of. Thank Malik. you, Gil. Gil thank cool. you. Thank you, Gil. But nobody wants to talk to O'Shea, man. But thank you, Gil. Yeah, I'm cold. Thank you. <laughs> you're looking out. <laughs> The next person can go. <laughs> can you maybe put the list in the chat. I don't know if we can see. I, okay, I have order. tried to put the list in the chat and it's not letting me. I apologize for the delay. DJ Christelle, please go. And also, I have DM some of you. So please check your chat. Thank you. I'm DJ Christelle, WOVU 95.9 FM. First of all, great cast. Uh, that's a great show. And this is a great concept. Uh, long overdue. Long overdue uh, by the word of AAU because I'm still involving you basketball and you football. This for Mr. O'Shea Jackson Jr. What research did you go through uh, to, to play your part? Because AAU is so complex and the youth sports is so complex, and a lot of people don't know too much the dark side about what goes down in that sport. Did you do do it? Did you go into some AAU games or talk to anybody that that frequent those games to get any uh, insider info about it? I I had always heard whispers of, you know, the shadiness of, um, you know, just youth amateur basketball. As far as for the role of Ike, um, I use my my personal experiences to really build on the character, you know, things that like. Before I was an actor, I was coaching my little brother, so I, I knew what it was what it what it means to have uh young men and ladies uh look to you for leadership for for protection and you know uh, that team unit to get the job done so i i had already had a connection with ike from that also the just the love of basketball um that i've had uh throughout my family as well my father was my coach and you know it just kind of went down the line and then i also looked at you know, just things that were that I had already had a personal connection with with Ike, like him uh, becoming a father around the same time uh, that I was offered the role. You know, I, I was having my my daughter was about two, you know, so I, I had all those same nervous feelings and swagger really brought a, a light uh, and, and shined it on the topic for me. And I, I hope that the show does it for a lot of people because you, you may hear whispers, but it's another thing to to see it. You know, this is a subject that most of the country might not even be aware of. And I hope that Swagger can not only entertain, but work as educational for the young athletes to be able to protect themselves a little bit better, to know what red flags to look out for, uh, and to be a part of a project where you can serve not only the young people, but the black community to further protect themselves, I think is something that you have to jump on. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. To make a new house here, I represent Black Writers Weekend out of Atlanta. Um, I wanted this question to go towards Isaiah because you are the main star and I have a son who is 14 now. So I was, I definitely connected to um, your story just because where I am currently in my life. I like the fact that the show is called Swagger because I'm constantly talking to my son today about his self-esteem, um, about his confidence. You walk with your head up. like, And I feel that sports kind of help our youth you know, gain that confidence. It's all about teamwork. Um, and there's no one person bigger than a team. So Isaiah, I wanted to ask you this question. You, with your experience with playing this character, um, what was some... Um, 
self-esteem or character building exercises that you have to go through to kind of exude that confidence and really bring this character to life? Mm. Well, I, um, I like to make music. So what I would do is kind of get in my little bubble and um, just be to myself, kind of practice things that just promoted my own confidence um, more because I'm a little more laid back than Jace. Jace is a little, he's kind of aggressive with the way he w needs everybody to know you know how good he is. And, um, you know, it, it didn't come easy at first. I think it it's really about just um, drilling, you know, those habits that make you feel good, those, those, um, you know, that confidence on the court, whether it's your ability to, you know, play basketball, act, but, you know, get a lot of reps in, you know, do it a hundred times. I think my swagger really came from, you know, working with um, Reggie Wallace, my trainer, Offset, just okay. working on my game and, you know, figuring things out. Are there any advice for young men like you that is kind of may perhaps are struggling, you know, school opened back up since COVID mm -hmm. and it's always this peer pressure to kind of get along. You got to dress a certain way to kind of fit in. You don't want to be bullied. You know, bullying is kind of at its all time high these days, especially because of social media. So any advice that you would give to young men your age on how to just gain that confidence or to initially even start it? Mm. I know that's so, it's such a, a, a layered one, sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like some, you know, the nights that where, you know, I'm afraid to do something, the things that where I, you know, hold myself back from, I feel like those eat me the most. And, you know, I'm going to say this quote that a lot of us who like grew up with, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Um, and it's important to be young and, you know, build experiences and stuff. So always, always keep, um, I always keep that in the back of my head, just, just to try, just to keep going and keep building. Just a try. Thank you, Isaiah. That was great. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, this is Karan from Karanism.com. And my question to all of you is, sports films are notorious for not fully developing the roles of women, the women that support these efforts and the true stories and the ones that are made up. So I want to know what will we learn from the women and the young women about not just about their sacrifice, but what will we learn about their lives and their loves? Uh, I hi. Think, oh, sorry. Who's now? Go ahead, Kavinjane. <laughs> um, I definitely think um, with my character Crystal, she develops a lot. It's not just you know her being a female baller. She has a lot more to herself, um, and I think she has a lot of strength as a young woman and just growing and learning and she knows what she wants she knows she loves basketball she knows she loves the people around her but she's still growing and learning things about life um and i think that's really important especially because of how old she is she's just 14 you know she hasn't experienced all of life but she's been through a lot and she's been through the struggles and the maze of life and taking wrong turns and making mistakes, but she makes it through. And I think that's really important, especially for people my age or just women in general, just to see that it's okay and you can heal and you can work through it and you can move past it and still do the things you love. I'll add on to that. Hi, I'm Chanel. Uh, I play Jenna. And one of, that was something that I initially liked when I first read the script. Um, that Jenna wasn't her circumstances. She was always trying to get her family out of these circumstances. And um, that's what a lot of Black women do. That's what women do. They have to keep moving. I really like that she was 
um, always taking care of herself, self-care. She looked nice. Her hair was always banging in the different natural hairstyles. And um, it, it's the joy in just seeing the people around you. Like, I know you said, like, I think this is where swagger gets it right, is where we look good in the midst of everything that's happening around us. And that was, that's what really attached me to Jenna. And along with what Kubinjane said. What would you say was the most important thing about Jenna taking care of herself? We see her taking care of everyone else and the team and the coach and, and her son and the family. But what would you say was the most important thing about her taking care of herself? Um, uh, her playing Jenna, I found that my, my son's future meant a lot to me. And because there was an absence of a father, I never wanted my children to lack. And, and to make it, you will get burnt out if you don't look at yourself. And I think Jenna, her having her own dreams, you know, um, having her own dreams of, um, just getting out of the situation that she's she's in, I think that was a huge motivator because sometimes it didn't always work because I had a young man pushing back on me whenever I tried to give him things. And so I, I think you'll see in Swagger where Jenna tries to take care of herself, like women try to do certain things. Um, but again, I think the the selflessness, the sacrifice that they do, she she loves her family. That is a part of Jenna. That's who she is. Yeah, I'd I'd like to add. I mean, I think that one thing that's really interesting um, is is that all of our characters, in, including Jackie, they have the, all their own wants and needs. And um, one of the th great things about Jenna, though, we allow her character to to be flawed as well. Um, I think, you know, when we when we approach our narrative, and while we talk about it as a sports narrative, the reality is, you know, we approach it, you know, let's get our audience at the edge of their seat and while they're leaning forward, hit them with the truth. Because the truth really is that this is everybody is on their own journey, um, having nothing to do with the game, but just really their own sort of it's 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 in many ways it is a coming of age story for every single one of our characters, um, you know, including the women. So I, I feel that, um, you know, I, I think that that's something that we really spent a lot of time in. And, and, and I think also, particularly with the Crystal character, I just feel like it's such a, an amazing arc. Um, her character's dealing with some very, you know, personal things. And, you know, we, we certainly, you know, don't want to ha have spoilers, but really dealing with some personal things that we really researched well with. And then also, like, the level of work that this actress put into like really learning to become a baller. Um, you know, we're not faking it, you know, she's, 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 she's making those shots. And, um, you know, I just couldn't have been, you know, more proud of the, the work that everyone's done. Thank you so much. Mm. Hello, it's Dana Abercrombie from The Coalition. My question is for the cast. What I love about this series is that, yes, it's basketball, but you don't really have to know anything about the, the game of basketball to really invest in these characters. So what were the themes or what was important for you that you wanted to get across through your character that you wanted the, the audience to pick up on? Um, I think, um, and this is a, kind of to go with the other answer too. I think what I really wanted the audience to pick up on from my character, Jace, is identifying with the outside noises in their lives, whether it's in their own heads, whether it's out there on the streets, in the game, the crowd, the haters, the social media, the whistle, just to identify it and then rise above it, you know? try to f and figure out what you can do in, you know, internalize what your control is over your life. I think that's what I want. I, yeah, I think, I, I think with, um, with Ike, uh, you know, my, my characters, he, he takes on a lot of grief because of, of things from his past. And, 
because of that, he's he is kind of closed off. I'm the only one that I really open up to, um, and in some cases, not even fully, is my wife, played by Christina Jackson. And you know, as, as men, a lot of times we try to put so much on our shoulders because we're just supposed to tough it out. You know, we're just supposed to to figure out how to make it happen. And through the team and through uh, Jace, I, I as a character get medicine that I didn't know that I needed. And it, you don't have to take on the world by yourself. And that 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 team unit, not being afraid to ask for help, not being afraid to you know vent a little bit uh, when it's needed is 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 something that I I feel like a lot of you know not not just males but a, a lot of people uh run away from is is asking for help or they don't even know how they necessarily need it but opening up and 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 speaking out loud the issues that you're feeling internally can be you know medicine that they don't know they need I'd love to um, also just allow Khalil to join the conversation. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, speaking of that, I, I would just say, you know, <laughs> that's what I love about the 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 realness of swagger. And, and it, it it's just life, you know, it's it's a bunch of people just living life. And at the center of it, it's it's basketball. And the bottom line is everybody in the show is just trying to find their own swagger. And when you're creating a character and trying to bring them to life, you realize that this character is a real person. And that's the, that's the close like relatability of Swagger. And, and when I was looking at Musa, you know, he was just a short guy just <laughs> trying to find his way you know, amongst the giants. And I think that's a, a character that a lot of people will be able to relate to. And um, yeah, yeah, I think as he tries to find his way and, and find his swagger, you encounter problems along the way and, and that's how you grow and learn for those experiences. So, yeah. And for you, Corbin? Um, For me, it was really important um, for my women out there, my black women mm -hmm. especially, to see that just because you're a woman doesn't stop you from beating any man. Like you can have the skill, you can have any profession you're in, you can have the skill, the level to be better than a man. Like, don't let any man tell you you can't do something just because of your gender. Um, and that was really important for me with Crystal, outside of just her storyline and everything she's went through. I think just the, like, she's so powerful to me because she just walked, like, she can just walk with the swagger. She can just walk into any room and tell anybody like get on the court and I'll beat you like it's simple and I love that about her I love how confident she is and the swagger she holds and I think that's something that's really important to me to let everybody see powerful black young woman wonderful thank you of course um hi I'm Jonita Davis from the Black Cape um, my question is for the basketball fans and, and the cast and Monks Reggie and all of you. Um, when, when each of you kind of approached the project, you had this kind of idea of what basketball was or what sport or, or even um, teen athletes, what, what that all, you know, uh, comp was comprised of. But how did this show um, affect, change, um, even your view of basketball, of, of, of teen athletes, of, of all of it, the entire um, industry. I mean, because that's what it's become is an industry. Um, that's for everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, I gained a lot of respect for basketball players and people who put themselves through daily training regimens, you know, for their career. It's, you know, it's insane because we had to go through a, a pretty crazy uh, transformation process to basically become from, well, from actors into athletes. And um, yeah, it's it's a lot of work. It's a hard grind, it's blood, sweat, tears, all of that. But um, it, it was very rewarding. It was very rewarding. And I think 
it was a very important part to show, you know, the the realness and authenticity of swagger. And uh, yeah, just I'm ready for the world to see. Yeah, to add on to that, I think because I never played basketball, but I have two brothers who play basketball and I look up to them and I took a lot from them and created Crystal. But I see a lot more personality when I watch basketball, like everybody has a personality, the coaches, the audience, you know, there's always that one person in the audience that's like screaming and like crazy and then you have players that are super cocky and confident but then you have players that know they're good and don't need to show it like I will watch basketball now and just laugh and I'll point out people and I'm like that's Musa or I'll be like that's Phil you know just point out all the little personalities and little things in basketball that's what I took from it and I like (laughs) I had no idea that their journeys uh started so young that they they um, came into the industry so young. And so I, I start wondering um, about the family members and I start watching the family celebrate every time someone made a shot. So now I'm invested in the stories of the ball players and it makes me love the game even more. I, um, I personally, you know, um, as a kid, you know, grew up playing basketball. Father was my coach. And, you know, I, I had always had a love for the game. But it was really the, you know, the game, the actual game of basketball is just the icing on the cake. What basketball did for me as a kid was it teaches you at a young age that you can have people that you have to rely on. Uh, You have people that are there to lift you up when you fall and you're there to do the same thing, that that team dynamic of people who you may have not grown up with, might not have no prior relationship with. But when you're on that court for, you know, 40 minutes or 48 minutes, y'all need each other. Y'all become this this single thing, almost a family and and. You know, everything else, uh, as Isaiah and slash Jace would say, the outside noise of it all, it all goes away while you guys are are there for the one goal. And it's the same kind of thing with Swagger. Swagger has so many stories and so many characters that you're going to fall in love with, so many people that you're going to root for individually on top of rooting for them as a team. It, it, it kind of makes uh, basketball – the basketball part of swagger, the icing on the cake. But, you know, if you don't, if, if those layers don't have the right ingredients, you know, you got, you got a terrible cake, but you know, we got that icing to sell it. So it's, it's uh yes, just the, the beautiful cherry on top is the game, but the, the inner core workings of that team dynamic and that, that family dynamic, I think that's, what's really going to make our show stand out and, and be something beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, th- I think along with, um, you know, you know, you, you know, your, your, your question about, you know, what, what the sort of like revelations, you know, we, we got from exploring this, but, you know, and, and I'll tell you, you know, most of our main characters, you know, Jace and, and, and our players, they're 14 years old. And, uh, as we know, you know, 14, that age 14 has historical context in our, in our community, right. You know, August 28th, 1955, Emmett Till is murdered. And I'm really like just held on to this idea of 14 and really just use that always as this sort of backdrop and this challenge in a writer's room with our cast of this, this sort of central question that permeates throughout this the, the season, which is how do we treat kids? You know, how do we treat kids in, in America? How do we treat kids in our community? And, you know, I'm, I'm a father who's have, who have kids who play sports. And while I wouldn't say it's a revelation, it's still always like you got to check yourself because you forget that they're kids and you have to, and like you forget to put their needs first and it's their journey. And so the sister that asked about, you know, swagger for her own kid. It's like one of the other things we want kids to know. It's like, it's okay to fail. It's okay, you know, but it's not okay to stay down. And so there are all of those sort of, you know, themes that we, that we, we, we talk about a lot and, 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 and hopefully illustrate in the show. Hmm. I personally have been playing basketball for like the last seven years. Um, But this show 
really lays out a blueprint for, you know, the game, I feel like, in a way, um, in the way Coach Ike decides to coach the team. You know, he's he promotes confidence, he brings energy, and he brings us in other places outside of the basketball court where you don't think he, he does something new, you know, something that's original that makes the mind work a, in harder and, and feel, um, you know, it makes your mind work differently, you know, and creates the beast out of all of us. And um, just the way he decides to promote confidence, you know, we got another character on the show, you know, where he's kind of like our weakest link on the team. And um, he just decides, you know, bad shot after bad shot. At first, it's like, wait, but then he's able to bring the best out of this player. And I'm really excited to see the coaching dynamic change in the game, you know. That's... These are all great answers. Thank you so much. And I, I want to say, all of you who play teenagers on the show, um, Isaiah, Quavenzene, Khalil, y'all look like grown versions of those kids right now. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I mean, I'm like looking at you, I'm like, none of y'all look 14, but on the show, it's so convincing. <laughs> well, you know, well, we, we also started, you know, we also started a couple of years ago. And I, mean, I think one of the exciting things, honestly, about our show was actually really seeing people grow up on our show because, you know, our show started off Right, as you see in the beginning of the narrative, it starts off before Ahmad, Brianna, and COVID. And that was like, that was honestly holding a mirror up to um, our, our reality. And, and they were younger and then COVID hit and we stopped shooting. And we stopped shooting for several months. And it, it allowed you know, me time to just really figure out how we wanted to deal with the COVID of it all and how the world was changing. And then you know, we come back six months later in our narrative and our kids are, are older and bigger. And and so it, it really was an amazing journey, not just, you know, just to be involved in this production, but to be involved in and in seeing, you know, many of our actors grow up right before our eyes. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Rhonda. Hey, Reggie. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Because Kevin Durant um, is the impetus for the show. Can you tell us, give us some insight about what your conversations with KD was like about what kind of show he wanted this to be? Um, yeah, I mean, when I first, you know, Kevin Durant and Brian Grazier had a, had a meeting where they discussed the, you know, possibility of doing a show inspired by his youth basketball days. And so um, they asked me to come meet with KD and, and I met with him and, and met with him a couple of times. And um, it was really interesting because, you know, he shared his real life experiences of um, playing, being a, a grassroots basketball player and not necessarily having everyone be a believer. Like he really had to make believers out of everybody uh, on the court, but most specifically himself. And so I was able to just really take, you know, you know, a few elements like that. And and then just um, honestly, like bring things in from my childhood, um, things I see with my kids playing sports and, and, and it really had a great writer's room where we just brought a lot of other characters to life. So I think one of the great things with KD is that he he did give us a, a launching pad. And then, um, you know, I had the freedom to just explore, bring in new elements. Um, certainly in doing a show like Swagger, when you go back to KD, you want to, you know, ask him how the basketball is looking. And, um, so it was definitely, you know, really, really important for us, um, as, as artists, but also, uh, you, you know, we knew that the basketball looking right was something important to KD. So, you know, that it, it all sort of worked out and it's been, you know, really great empowering process. Go Lakers. Go Lakers. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I need some water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some light. And the uh, and can you comment finally on the activist part as we go on, showing that you know these are more than just athletes; these are 
people and you know kids who are coming into their own as as um, you know productive adults. I mean, I think your 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 question lays it out beautifully. You know, I mean, I mean again, get the audience at the edge of their seat while they're leaning forward. Let's hit them with the truth. And so, you know, who are these people growing up in America at this point in time? Uh, what perspective do we need to challenge? Um, what do they need to, to learn about themselves? You know, you know, overall, you know, we've been talking a lot about this word swagger. And, 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 and so on the surface, you know, swagger is about bravado and confidence. But beneath the surface, as our characters learn throughout their journey, um, beneath the surface, about a cause bigger than yourself. You know, that cause can be your people, your community, your family, your team. But this cause bigger than themselves is is what Chase and, and all of our characters, you know, learn throughout the journey. And and, and that's really um, you know, where we where we meet uh, you know, our characters towards the end. Thank you. Great show. Thank you very much. Guys, you were tremendous, and uh, it's nothing less than we would expect from a Bythewood project. So thank you, Reggie. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to watching the show. We look forward to watching you grow and soar. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film critics, thank you for your time, and thank you, audience, for watching the AFCA Roundtables. Have a great day. <laughs>